Hello, and welcome to Nintendo Voice Chat, IGN's Nintendo podcast. I am your host, Casey DeFreitas, and I am here joined today by Zach Ryan. Welcome in. Pierre Snyder. Good morning. And Brian Altano. <laughs> Hello. Uh, Hello. We are in, we're at Gamescom in Germany right now. That's right. It's, it's great. Live on the stage. Mm -hmm. Do an NPC. A very so, special episode. A very special episode. We're going to get to all the Gamescom stuff in a second, but mm -hmm. first let's run down some of your normal Nintendo news. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Starting with a very mysterious tweet, or maybe not, depending on your own opinion. <laughs> by Nintendo about Mario. <laughs> this is what the tweet said, accompanied by a picture of Mario with eating watermelon. Even Mario needs a little summer vacation. No matter where your summer odyssey took you, we hope it was filled with sunshine. Mm. And there are two key words in there. There's odyssey and sunshine. Like mm -hmm. Mario Odyssey, I didn't need to put those two dots together for anyone. But Don't forget about the third word, vacation. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I don't know. Even Mr. Fantastic thinks this is a stretch, don't you yeah, think? Yeah, I mean, it, the, <laughs> just let it have a little like, joy. It doesn't seem like, to me anyway, that Nintendo likes to do teases, <laughs> like especially in this way that's sort of kind of like on the nose. Yeah. Um, I, I scrolled past this in my social feeds and it didn't even register to me that it was like, oh, yeah. Super Mario Sunshine. Like it just was like, oh, there's Mario eating a watermelon. But now that you read it and it's got the terms in there, there's, I mean, they teased the. Uh, Remember this this interview about Link's Awakening where they they said I would like to make a Zelda game where you can be a thief. No, Remember yeah, that no, whole he thing? Said, he said I want to make a game where you're a thief, and then yeah. like three years later they're like, oh yeah, there's Link's Awakening. Yeah, and so it's not unprecedented that they drop some wisdom like that. Um, I don't I mean, know. I, I still don't. I yeah. still think they're just having fun. I, I think that, I think that fans especially have been asking a lot for like a Sunshine remaster yeah. that kind of goes back and fixes Fans. some of Sunshine's problems. Yeah, I like Sunshine a lot. Yeah. Um, but I I don't know. I feel like the first we would hear of it in a, like a tease like this, like that just seems like a fun engagement play to me. All right. Yeah. yeah. I, I, think, think so too, I, I think they're making Super Mario Sunshine for Nintendo Switch and it's going to be out this summer. That's why, that's why I love having Brian on the show. He's always Mr. Positivity. Brian, huh? I don't know, man. This it's gonna summer happen. is over in, like, what, a month? Yeah, I was going to say how much summer is there We still. have one month of summer. San Francisco, it's the 20 summer every other week. It you're was right. gone. No, you're right. San Francisco summer is in October, so we have full two months okay, left. Okay, fine. Yeah, we can figure it out. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I've heard some conspiracy theories about the seeds equating to a date of when the next Nintendo Good Direct Lord. will be. <laughs> oh, because there were four on the watermelon, two on his face. I yeah. was counting them. I was looking uh -huh. for that. Yeah. yeah. So it comes out uh, April 4th, 2040. Four on, wait, <laughs> that right? wait a minute, it comes out, wait, what he's, four on the watermelon and two on his face? Yeah. Is there a, is there a zero anywhere? No. To be found? Uh, all right. Well, are zeros are all around you. Wait, that sounds Plays wrong. It. It's always 420 in Super Mario Sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> Almost certainly. But hey. <laughs> That's enough about that. <laughs> Are you sure we could do like 55 minutes we on that? We probably could. Honestly, I think we could talk about 55 minutes about it, just about anything. But let's move on to why I was gone last week. Oh, yeah. um, so I went straight from the Pokemon World Championships to here at Gamescom. That's a bold move, I'd say. I did it. Yeah. Where, were the, where was the World Champions at? So the World Championships were at Washington, D.C., and it was all themed around the many museums at the, um, like, in Washington, D.C. Yeah, and like, like in the Capitol mall. building and, yeah. like, the... Uh, Natural Science Museum. So there were nearly life-size replicas of fossil Pokemon Yeah, bones. those were really cool. It was really neat. Like, we have an article up there with a slideshow of all of the set pieces, and it's, it was really cool. Yeah. And they also had their very first official Pokemon Go tournament, mm -hmm. PvP, okay. the trainer battles. And it is a lot more involved than I initially thought. And, like, I won't get into it. I have another article about this. I promise I'm not just trying to plug this, but... <laughs> Did, we, did things get heated? It, they got super heated, and the crowd actually reacted to what was happening. And there was actually one particular play that was just, you had to have a lot of foresight into it. And it looks, you would expect it to just be tapping, but it's kind of more turn-based and strategy-based than PvE in Pokemon Go is. And Junichi Masuda, um, who the producer of Pokemon and longtime Pokemon legend, uh, brought his favorite Pokemon, Psyduck, even though it's not good competitively at all. And he got completely destroyed, and it was oh, very wow. funny. Psyduck is not good competitively? I know. Who would have thought? He's the great. duck with the chronic migraines didn't do well. <laughs> but so when they play competitively, are the phones tethered? Like they, they're like mounted somewhere, or do, can they go wild? So they actually had iPads mounted on oh, the podiums. I see. Okay. And you could take the, the iPads out because they would have to 
bring them to each other to like so re-put in codes. It's not Pokemon Go without some technical difficulties, yeah, it's right? Sure. We're definitely but it's also not Pokemon Go if you can't walk around. This is but the world champions. Pokemon stand. <laughs> the That's Pokemon true. World yeah. Champions, is this cards, cards games, and, and Pokemon game? game? Or and Pokemon Go? And yeah. it was, it's originally trading card game and video game. Okay. And they added Pokemon Tournament. Yeah. Now they did their Invitational with Pokemon Go. Okay. And then there are a ton of side events for everyone who goes. And it's also very wholesome. Like, I saw there was a girl sitting on the floor with a ton of binders around her, uh -huh. and everyone who'd pass by, she'd be like, what's your favorite Pokemon? Uh -huh. And then she'd turn to a page in the binder and have a ton of stickers of that Pokemon. Oh, that's cool. Give you one. Aw. It's all very so nice. Sweet. Yeah. It's a I nice saw event. I saw a clip of the, the junior matches where it was like two very young children. Mm -hmm. They were probably like eight or nine, mm -hmm. and they were just like so terrified to be on stage, but fighting each other in Pokemon was very cute. I, I can't it. imagine. Yeah doing that competitively and being on stage. Yeah. That was yeah. terrifying. It was like, and now for your entertainment, here's a small child playing Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we also, speaking Crying. of Pokemon, they actually had Pokemon Sword and Shield and Pokemon Masters playable okay. at the World uh, Championships. And Pokemon Masters is coming to iOS and Android on August 29th. What is Did you get some playtime like? in? I played it as a preview. Mm -hmm. So I didn't is play it at the championships. W what is Masters? Is that TCG for your phone? So, no. So, Pokemon Masters is a new mobile game coming um, It's to mobile. <laughs> I know, right? What, a, what an astute... Yeah, yeah, platform revealed, first time. <laughs> yeah. But, um, so, it takes a different turn where you, at instead of collecting Pokemon, you collect trainers who have their partner Pokemon okay. and add them to your team. And you can fight with three of them at a time. So, it's three-on-three -three battles where you're controlling all of them at the same time. And it's kind of real-time mixed with turn-based. And they did that because they wanted to be able to do co-op and PV, like, um, and actually you can't fight other people, but you can okay. play co-op with them. But they thought it wouldn't be fun if you had to wait for a long time for your friend to choose their moves. So they kind of combined both systems. And it's really interesting and a lot more fun than I thought it would be. And they put a lot of detail and thought into the background characters. Nice. Oh, that's cool. Hey, uh, sword, yes, sir. sword and Shield are playable here at no. Gamescom. No, right? Schwert und Schild. That's what I wanted to ask you. Schwert. Yeah, because yeah, I, I did this thing where I walked by and I saw the logos and I was like, like what? what? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Schwert? Schwert. Schwert has a couple of extra letters. Yes. Uh, yeah. But, so, but Schild's pretty close. It right? sounds like you're yeah. saying a worse word than you're saying. I know, uh, I know that we're going to talk about some Gamescom games mm -hmm. in the like a later, later segment, but um, mm -hmm. The the sword and shield demos are those the same demos at E3? Did like you get it, a chance yeah. to? Did anybody get a chance to go hands on with? Uh, I saw that the sword and shield, the Luigi's Mansion and Link's so Awakening demos were. So I, I yeah. assume those were too. Sword and shield was the same, yeah. same demo as E3, and Bigger. it was the same demo at but the Pokemon World Championship. Okay, yep. cool. Just in English. Yeah. yeah. It's and so also just a PSA heads up, Capcom is having a very big sale on the 3DS and the Switch. So if you're interested in, you know, a little game that you've probably never heard of called Monster Hunter and wanted to check it out for mm, really cheap. I see. Hey, kudos to you for getting both yeah. Pokemon and Monster Hunter in the I'm, A block I'm, yeah. yet again. <laughs> I'm really impressed how you got Monster Hunter into this show, even though there's nothing about I, it. Well, now you can get Monster Hunter on the 3DS for like nine dollars. Okay. So I just yeah. well, had to mention go. it. And while we have you, yeah. if you're upset that Resident Evil 4 was too expensive, now it's not. So oh, that's right. That. Yeah, there yeah. you go. That's a good There's one. There's a ton of games from Capcom that are mm -hmm. under ten bucks. I believe all the Mega Man collections too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's I think a good with sale. with those three franchises, we fulfilled all of our Capcom fulfillments. So we did it. Nice. <laughs> So um, we also learned that there is a Monster Rancher port coming to Switch and mobile. So weird. At least specifically in Japan. I'm just assuming it's going to come here. For sure. But it's, I was really interested in learning more about it because the whole shtick with Monster Rancher was to put in a CD into your PlayStation and then yep. it would generate a, random, a monster right. based on the data. Right. Yeah. So instead, you're going to connect to an online database of music CDs and pick one. Oh. Which is That's like slightly right? less fun right? and novel, but yeah. still it's yeah. a good solution, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what other solution they would have. On the DS versions, you just draw a picture and then they would generate a monster. Yeah, like uh, that. I mean, I guess like wishfully thinking I, I would, on a mobile version, you could do like, you could connect it to your Spotify or something, right? Which right, would be cool. right, right. But like on a DS version or a Switch version, it, it'd be interesting to like choose music from games like yeah. if it was like that would be really cool yeah like if you could if you have games downloaded digitally like yeah. maybe that, that those libraries are available yeah or if, you, mm -hmm. if you used games instead yeah is, or that yeah. yeah yes or you could do you could do a snapshot very meta. of your friends list you know the names of your friends you could do something like the games you played like oh, that kind friend, of stuff could friend be really codes. cool yeah, yeah friend yeah. codes yeah. you could do some cool, cool stuff with that it doesn't have to be music yeah. mm -hmm. right 
So that is about all the time we have for non-GamesCon related news, but keep it right here at IGN for more later. Listen! Welcome back to IGN at Gamescom Now. This is NVC, IGN's Nintendo podcast. And right now we're going to talk about The Witcher 3 on the Switch and other games we got to play at the Nintendo Switch while here at Gamescom. Pear, you got to play The Witcher 3. The uh, yes, I saw The, the Switcher, Switcher <laughs> running on the tiny screen and some footage of it running on a TV. They didn't have it, have it hooked up to play on a TV. Probably a wise choice. Um, it, the footage on the TV looks really blurry right. and not great and then you play it on the tiny screen and it looks good it looks surprisingly good i've noticed that with a couple of games this year yeah. at conventions and the switch obviously handheld and you know and, and console uh, until september 20th when the switch light yeah. comes out and it's just yep. one um they did this with mortal kombat at pax east where they were like here's the game but it's only hiding here and you can you can't film it you can't do anything like that yeah so at the witcher booth which was weirdly enough behind like a small wall you had to be 18 to get in unlike yeah. yep. any of the other games that yeah booth. they're actually pretty yeah. strict about it here in, in, in Germany which I respect um, they had it running on a TV where it didn't look great and like I imagine the footage you're seeing now or the footage you've seen before or really any of it hasn't really looked that great compared to you know this is one of those games where people like they play uh, max settings they buy brand new PCs for and just kick it to the highest possible settings. It got upgraded for PS yeah, Plus and, yeah, and Xbox exactly. One X, all of that. Um, right? In handheld mode, this is one of the best looking games on Switch. It, it is. It's really pretty. And the thing that impressed me is the, the lighting is really good. Yeah. So the lighting, the, the kind of the sun-drenched vistas, it looks really good. The, you know, the, the Witcher and his horse Roach cast really good shadows mm -hmm. on everything. So not just on the ground, but on all the environments. You can see it in some of the footage. And it just looks... It really looks good. And if yeah. they had done it where they had ported it at a higher frame rate but taken out some of the lighting and special effects, I think it would have looked far worse. I actually like this the, this decision. Yeah, I think, I mean, obviously it's a, a very different art direction than Breath of the Wild, but if you played 100 hours of that game, you'll be right at home here. Um, the thing I will say, though, is that horses in video games are different from game to game. And yes. there have been several of them since this game came out, such as Red Dead, where the horse was mostly smart but also got tired and dirty. Yep. And, you know, Breath of the Wild, which was, like, really awesome being able to jump over everything. Yeah, but Roach is an idiot. Roach was never a very yeah. good horse. Yeah. Roach yeah. is an idiot horse. I, Roach so, is not good at jumping over mm. things. So um, We dug into the settings a bit, which, luckily, you were there to help do because you could read German and we couldn't. Then they got mad at us. Yeah, yeah. But that's okay. What? But we can talk about what we did before they got mad at us. There's, like, uh, you can turn off uh, aliasing. Yes. So you can make it look even sharper. Actually, I don't know if it worked right. Like, I didn't see much of a difference mm -hmm. there, but, you know. The motion blur we were able to turn off, that helped a lot. You can turn off yeah. motion blur. So there are a couple of settings like that. Mm -hmm. There's nothing about, like, dynamic resolution or anything mm -hmm. like that. But, yeah, it, it, I thought it looks really good. And if you haven't played The Witcher, you know, if I had to pick my game of the decade, it would be a fight between Breath of the Wild and The Witcher Same. 3. Ooh. Yeah. I, I think The Witcher 3 is just fantastic. Uh, it includes the DLC, which is also really good. All of it. It is the completed edition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's great. And the, both of those DLCs yeah. are incredible. And uh, so yeah, I wonder it controls how well. It does, you know, yeah. We, we played the beginning of it, so you didn't have that many powers sure. yet. But um, yeah. I wonder how big that file size is going to be. That's going to be pretty it's, massive. Uh, I think the whole thing is on a 32 gig card. 32 gig. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. and they said that the original game is not that much time? bigger. No, that's they, a they Actually, I talked to the developer a little bit. They said that they were able to just compress textures. They removed some of the level of detail. The original game, I think, has like five LOD levels. This one has three. Right. So, because the screen is smaller, you're not seeing things, you know. The draw distance The different. draw different dis distance is a little different. Mm -hmm. But hmm. um, um, when we yeah, play it, space. we went into the settings and uh, changed it to nighttime, and it was like not as good looking. Mm -hmm. During the day, there's a lot of, like, I think the skyboxes are doing a lot of heavy lifting to make that game look really good. Yeah, it but looks, yep. yeah, yeah, it's a pretty looking game. So worth worth to play it. For, For sure. sure. What if yeah. you've already played The Witcher 3 on another console? Depends. If you haven't finished, if you haven't played the DLC, maybe it's worth a shot here, but you have to replay the whole game. Yeah. yeah. Um, or if you didn't explore some of the side stories, because there are some of the side stories are better than the main quest. Yeah, and that's like, true. you got to play them. Yeah. It's just so good. So that was uh, we were talking about The Witcher 3 on the Nintendo Switch. We, it actually also just got a release date. It's going to be October 15th, which we learned during the Gamescom uh, opening night show. Yeah. Yep. So that's exciting, and it's here playable. It's yeah. good. So you it's have one two of weeks to finish it before Luigi's <laughs> Mansion, yeah. oh. which is one year too little. Can you cram 150 Absolute, hours absolutely into two not. weeks? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. And then even if you skip Luigi's Mansion, Pokemon comes out the next month. True. Yeah. So and you also yeah. have three weeks to finish Link's Awakening. Oh no, there's just there's too many Nintendo. It's good games. travel game it's though. Good problems fall. to have. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it though? Yeah. <laughs> it is a good travel game. Probably it probably kill your battery. Yeah. I assume. 
Yeah, but now you've got the little light, the switch light. And the switch. And the switch new. Neil, whatever. Yeah. What's your new switch called? I don't Charlie. Know. Charlie. Yeah. Okay. Light Charlie. Switch. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. The light. <laughs> Speaking of the switch light, Brian, you got to go. You got to see it. Yes. Here uh, so we will have hands-on impressions in a little under a week via Seth Macy, cool. who went to the New York City preview event, which I really wanted to go to, but I was here. Uh, I was not able to hold the switch, but it is behind glass, and I got to see it in person, the switch light, mm -hmm. and hold up my personal uh, new switch up to it. I feel like they had the brightness setting down a little bit, but the cool thing about this is that usually when you see hardware on a show floor like this, it's just a controller or something like that. Or it's, you know, it's a PlayStation. This was actually running gameplay. They ran uh, Mario Kart, Breath of the Wild, and Smash Brothers, and pretty much cycled between the three. I have the gray one pre-ordered, which looks a lot darker in person than I expected. Yeah. Um, it's almost like a charcoal. It's like very different than any gray mm -hmm. they've done before. And then the the turquoise and you know banana yellow, as as I'm referring it to, is uh, are really really awesome. Like they really oh, pop. Okay. Um, because I looked right at the gray one and fell asleep a little bit. <laughs> Just. Because if you're familiar its... with Nintendo Voice Chat, we've already yeah. given Brian a lot of crap yeah. for We're getting gray. Yeah. I like it because it reminds me of a Game Boy. This you reaffirmed know? my decision to go with yellow. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the plastic the and everything looks color. really good. Like, this is not, this doesn't have the kind of chintzy looking plastic of the Wii U or the, even some of the Game Boy Advance models. This yep. is like the kind of more, like the kind of porous textured, like it looks a little glossy, like not glossier, like it looks more expensive, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it doesn't look like it's like a fingerprint magnet, yep. Yep. so that's yeah. cool. Um, the bevel's a little interesting, the D-pad looks awesome, the shoulder buttons look almost identical to the ones we have already sure. right now, mm -hmm. which are great, because the those have served us well so far. I'd so. be really interested to test out the the D-pad. The yeah, yep. yeah. and works. again, this is a handheld only $200 system. This will not connect to your TV, uh, unless you have some fancy capture kit, I imagine, so. Well, we'll see if it's software blocked or hardware blocked with you know some of the, like, the Genki output coming, yeah. you know? Oh, we'll yeah. see if you can actually connect it to the TV. I bet, I bet. I have a feeling they just yank that stuff out of the internals to, Because yeah. it's know. cheaper? Yeah. Like, or it, maybe it was so easy to just leave it in and it's just software. Yeah, keep the size down. And somebody's going to hack it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we all also got to play some games on the Switch that are here at Gamescom. Yeah. Uh, Zach, why don't you go first? Yeah, I played um, Trine 4, uh, which is the fourth Trine. Ah. Um, but it's like an action uh, puzzler game. Uh, you know, it, it, this is taking its back to the series roots where it's more 2.5D. Mm -hmm. But um, I played the opening level, um, and it, it's just so much fun and so charming. And the puzzles are, are accessible but challenging. You know, like we fought a really cool boss. That was a lot of fun. Um, the developer that was there, the guy giving me the demo on hand, said that this is the longest trying game that they've built, which is mm. really cool. So if you're a fan of the series, I think that this is probably right up your alley. I'm stoked to play this. I think it looks really it's good. It's so pretty. I played yeah. the one that was on Wii U. Yeah, yeah. that was Trine yeah. 3. Trine 3, okay, yeah. cool. And Trine 3 was more of like a th more 3D than these ones are. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this game looks awesome, and I had a lot of fun playing the demo. Um, let's see, what else did I play? Um, I, I played... played did Panzer, you play Dragoon. Panzer Dragoon, yeah, yeah. I did too. Did everyone Panzer get Dragoon. to play that? Yeah. 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 What did everyone think? Um, I'm not a fan. It looks really nice. It feels very old. Yeah. And it runs kind of choppy. Okay. Yeah. So it's yeah. definitely. I'm hoping it's not done. I uh, think so. The the person who was showing the game, I just went up to the booth and played it. He had a ton of notes after talking to everyone. He was writing like everything yeah. oh, down. Oh, really? So I'm wondering if this is just a really early... You're talking about like a Brian X Machina situation. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm yes. wondering if this is <laughs> a really Change early the name. playable demo. And they <laughs> are they are actually taking feedback from people's hands-on impressions on the show floor. Yeah. This, this sounds like some like an idiotic sentence, which I'm, I'm very much known for, but I think the dragon is too big. What? Like, you think the yeah. dragon is too yeah, big? Yeah, I, I think that. that he's like, like he basically... He takes up too much screen space. Yeah, he, okay. his, and his it's big ass wings where you're blocking your whole field of yeah. view. It's okay. just like, yeah. There's, I mean, the, the issue I had... Too much all, dragon. If you haven't played Panzer Dragoon, it's just like Star Fox, right? Um, you uh, you have a special power way. If you hold down the shot button, you lock on to enemies so you can complete like entire, you know, you can shoot down entire groups of five as they come at you. And that's that's how the game is played. And then the right. shoulder buttons will let you look Which left and right. Which the shoulder buttons will let you le look left and right. So there are enemies on your sides and you have a radar that shows you where the others are. All right. of that works really well, but the game runs a little slow. And it's just like we've seen so much more since Panzer Dragoon came yeah. out, right? Yeah. yeah. It, it feels it very feels slow. Very there, were, there was 
one area where literally nothing happened. So I got to think it's just really early on. Yeah, and I desperately wanted to do do, do barrel rolls and dodge. And you yeah, can't. you can't do that. It's, it's literally just control the dragon with it, the left stick and then press a button for attack. It's a You're cool absolutely right. It needs more camera. to do. It's a cool, cool throwback. Mm -hmm. um, a Panzer Dragoon Saga is sort of like the definitive Panzer Dragoon game, and I wish it was that one coming. Very different. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but it's you know it's it's neat to have this, especially for like old dudes like me that remember playing it on Saturn when it yeah. came out. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I totally agree. It's a cool it's a cool throwback game. I I wish they added a couple of more modern features. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I th that could probably be said about any remaster. This is true. Yeah, um, I I also got to play Final Fantasy VIII for a little bit, and it that, looks yeah. nice. But it also runs a little choppy, which is weird. That is weird for a PlayStation game. Like I was kind of surprised. Um, even the demo guy, the guy giving me the demo, was like, "Yeah, it's a little bit choppy. We're still working out the bugs." But okay. um, y you know, it's it's a, basically a straight port, upresed, so it looks a little nicer, and it has some of the features that the other Final Fantasies have, where it's like instant kill and fast forward, so you can move through areas faster, which is cool. I love Final Fantasy VIII. It's okay, but classically how you, divisive. But. How do you think the art style holds up, though? Like, but, I mean, it doesn't look great. It does not look yeah, great. No. I was, you know, like you put Final Fantasy VI up there, and it still looks really cool. Yeah. And then you know, seven onward, it gets a little rough. And yeah. Eight, yeah. Eight does not has not aged well. I mean, I it was a huge jump from seven, where uh, yeah. you know you had these squat characters, and yeah. this is a more realistic looking game. But yeah, um, yeah it's it, it, yeah, it, it there it leaves something to be desired. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I, it's I played, a great game. I played uh, a little bit of Dragon Quest Eleven, which looks beautiful on Switch. There is right. a demo and out for that now, right? Yeah, there and is a demo and. Your, I can't wait for that your game. Your progress now. during yeah. the demo will transfer over. Yeah, oh, that's I'm really cool. Yeah. So like, I was on the fence mm -hmm. as to whether or not I could cop to a, you know, another 80-hour RPG, but yeah. I'm I'm gonna do it. Like that game looks awesome, and I've heard that it is an incredible, like, sort it, of genre-defining game for this. And the gen, switch so. over to 2D is really cool. Yeah, too. Just the yeah, that's really awesome. Play, play the yeah, game you can play it in like a 16-bit like version. Yeah, they added game. a ton of features for the yeah. S version on the Switch. Yeah. Spe um, speaking of 2D, did you mm -hmm. guys see Sonic and Mario at the Olympic Games 2020? Yes. I saw a lot of people playing oh, it. Did you see that? Did, I saw did you see the 2D mode? Wario without a shirt on. Yeah, okay. that's very odd. So yeah. I have no interest in that game. <laughs> yep. But and I do have an interest the, in Wario shirtless. They showed the uh, they showed the 2D mode. So they basically did like a track and field with a mix of like 8-bit Nintendo characters, it's really 16 bit, cool. bit Sonic in it's, it. It's essentially the entire game, from what I can tell, and it's based on the Ten Tokyo discipline, 64. Yeah. Ten he, disciplines. In the the uh, like on social, I saw that they were explicit about saying certain events. Okay. So it's not everything. I think it's like up to an X number of events. Yeah, it was like a lot of them. It's oh, 10, 10 events. Okay. Yeah. And it's based on the There's 1964 Tokyo Olympics. Yeah. So That's really cool. And it's yeah, got it's running, really it's got, you know, jumping, all that there stuff. There was like, like wrestling and it's, it showed a character just like body slamming 8-bit Peach and it's like, yeah. That's weird as hell. Yeah. I gotta yeah. play that. But it looks so fun. I mean, yeah. it brought back memories of track and field and summer games for me and like, I'm actually paying attention now. I think I know. that was such a smart move. And then seeing 16-bit uh, Sonic against 8-bit Mario is just really cool. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. I didn't um, even know that was a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. brand new. They announced uh, there, it here, yeah. There was actually one more thing that I discovered here at Gamescom that I wanted to share with you guys, and I was curious to, to see if you also uh, got to experience this. Uh, can we put that image up on the screen there? Is that doable? Um, meat ah. sticks. <laughs> I saw a bunch of people watching, watching yeah, around with the meat sticks. Yeah, we eat these big meat sticks. They're okay. big, pointy meat sticks. Yeah. They've got a nice spice to them and a good you're, smoky flavor. What is your uh, actual name for the meat sticks? You're missing the most important part of these meat sticks is that they are essentially swords, and the bread at the bottom is the hilt. That's okay. true. And you that, that keeps your hand. So the barbecue drips down onto the hilt, mm. and then uh, your hand is, is clean. Delicious and portable, yeah. not okay. unlike I have I have a so. photo. I have a photo of Dustin the Gary dual, dual wielding these things. <laughs> Very very Witcher like. That's what you guys ate. I went for currywurst. Nah, meat sticks all the way. Meat sticks. What? Are, what is the actual name? Uh, it's impossible to it's, know. It's not. Can't even German. tell what the meat is. Could yeah. be. It could be any animal, really. Fleischwerter. Could be shoes. We have Old no tradition. idea. Is it? Flesh swords. Really? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what these things are. They're Hello. You got me, fair. food. <laughs> no. But the food's actually pretty good. That's all right. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Uh, it's Ran it portable in, boys. and light <laughs> and affordable, just like the <laughs> Nintendo Switch. But that's about all the time we have right now. Great. Stick around for more. We're going to talk about Astral Chain and also our most anticipated games from the Nintendo Indies World live stream. We'll be right back. Here we go.
Hello and welcome back to IGN at Gamescom Now. This is MVC, IGN's Nintendo podcast. So we're going to be talking about Astral Chain. We just got a 30 minute gameplay video of it. And we're also going to be talking about our most anticipated games from the Nintendo Indies World Showcase. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but we switched out Zach Ryan for Mitchell because Hi, Mitchell. Mitchell. It's I am actually Mitchell. wearing Zora. No, never mind. <laughs> I had something in my head and it just didn't work out. Never mind. <laughs> well, thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Mitchell. You've been, you've been working you. super hard at Gamescom, so I'm, I'm glad so, you're up here. I'm so, so happy to be here. <laughs> we're doing tons of behind the scenes stuff, so it's, it's good to have you right here on the couch. But Mitchell is one of the only people in the office who has gotten hands on with Astral Chain so far. Yeah. So I wanted to bring you on to tell us about it because it's one of those games that I think a lot of people have been talking about but don't know a lot about, don't know if it's their type of game or what to expect. So first hands-on impressions, what do you think? First hands-on impressions are, man, this game is awesome. Um, so you can see we got some, if you're watching this, you've got some footage right here. Um, the big thing about Astral Chain is that a lot of Platinum games are, are kind of defined by having a lot of like complex combos that you can do with your, with your actual character. In Astral Chain, you, your combos for your own character are very, very minimal. You just mash one button, you have the same combo for all, for all your different weapons. Uh, but the big difference is that you have this other being that you can control, and that being is the one that is really doing most of the damage here. Mm. And you don't actually hit any bu buttons for it to attack. You just kind of move it in front of, a, of, an, en of an enemy, and it does the, all the attacking on its own. Mm -hmm. And so it becomes this game of keeping track of not only your own damage, but also you want to make sure that your your Legion doesn't get hit, because if your Legion gets hit, then that little circular blue meter goes down, and if it goes down all the way, it disappears and you can't bring it back until the, the meter goes back huh. up. Uh, and all the while you're, do, you're micromanaging this, you also have the titular Astral Chain, which is connecting you to, and you can use that to wrap up enemies. There's a couple of moves that kind of utilize it, so you can like have it go straight away, and then uh, you'll have arrows that fall down on the line of the Astral Chain. And it's just, it's a lot to micromanage, yeah. but uh, it's one of those things that if you, if you get used to it and you master how it works, there's nothing like what it feels like to to be in a really heated battle of Astral Chain and like just you know so Mitch, succeeding. So you're you're a huge Platinum Games fan, yes. like one of the biggest I've ever met. Um, is there anything that this sort of like can you uh, sort of uh, uh, compare this to that this yeah. is adjacent to? Does it is feel it like Bayonetta? They like yeah. when I first saw it, I'm like, oh, this is gonna play like Bayonetta, but but it doesn't, right? Yeah. It's funny because uh, I think Atsushi Naba, the one of the main producers at Platinum Games, he described this as being like the evolution of Platinum Combat. Okay. And I can totally see where he's coming from with that because you play it and there's elements of so many different Platinum games in there. It has the Bayonetta style of if you dodge just at the right time, time right. slows down. It has the, uh, the Metal Gear Rising blade slashing mechanic. It has the Metal Gear Rising thing where you, uh, you can like steal hearts from, from enemies to refill your life. Um, it has the wonderful 101 mechanic of mm. having to like use a different control method to to do damage um, and even though it has all those very familiar aspects of other platinum games it still feels entirely on its own um, so it has sort of elements really cool. of like a greatest hits of platinum yeah. but builds on something brand new entirely yeah it um, kind of takes all that and manages to find its own identity yeah I, I find this game to be like fascinating and bizarre I did a couple interviews for it at E3 and I had no idea like the a whole sort of jaywalking police angle yeah. where you're like you're you're cleaning up litter in the street but then you go to these like weird nightmare planes and you start fighting these like incredible looking beasts and this is a really damn good looking game yeah it is like, this and is a this is a beautiful game i love the creature design it's mm -hmm. it's just so interesting it's it's futuristic without being too robotic i guess if yes. that makes sense like just looking at this creature on the screen right now it still seems really like biological, like you're yeah. not looking at a total machine thing. I guess less robot than Zoids. Mm -hmm. For sure. <laughs> and what's interesting is uh, Brian talked about the jaywalking thing. All we're seeing right now is the combat, but there's a whole other element to this game where it's like almost RPG-esque, where you are this this police officer, and every chapter basically starts very normally. You're just like a, a police officer. You're checking out a case, and it kind of devolves into this. Okay, we now we're in this weird alternate dimension fighting these huge chimeras uh, and 
you know, you have to do things like you can pick a can off the ground and put it in a trash can. You'll get, you know, points for it. Yep. You can, mm -hmm. uh, you know, find people who are infected by this uh, this disease and, and cure them of it. Um, so there's, there's a lot of other aspects to this game other than just the combat, which is kind of interesting. And it's it's something that's very un-Platinum-esque. But you... uh, I think I think people are going to be are going to be happy with how it turns out. Mm -hmm. Have you been able to play it in co-op yet? I have not. I heard that it makes it more difficult, so I'm really oh, oh, interested yeah. in, in trying it in single player versus co-op to see if that's actually true, because usually you play a game co-op and it makes it significantly easier. Yeah. But I guess the whole mechanic of being attached does the complete opposite for this game. Right. Yeah. I, I, I honestly don't know what, uh, what value I would have playing co-op just because... The thing that makes it unique is the ability to control two things at once, yeah. and like your individual character, like I said, it doesn't have very many combos or, or ways to diversify what they do in combat. Uh, it's kind of just mashing one button. So it might be too simplistic in co-op. Yeah. You think? Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna translate what you just said, and in much more simpler terms, because I know you. What you're actually saying is, anyone you play with will hold you back. <laughs> <laughs> seriously. No, no, no. no, no seriously. No. You're all, I, like, you're a very, very humble man. I, I will say it for you. You are damn good at video games. Oh, if I was like, Mitchell, you want to play this together? You'd be like, yeah, <laughs> sure. And I'll be like, I can hit the dog, too. And you're like, get away from me, Brian. The Devil May Cry devs complimented him on his Devil May Cry yeah. gameplay. Yeah, exactly. He's good. That was a really, that was a really cool moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, a highlight of your career? One of Absolutely. <laughs> When's this game out? August 30th. Thank you, Casey, because oh, I welcome. did not have an answer. <laughs> oh, wow. That is incre yeah, that's incredibly really soon. soon. Is it is what? It is very soon. Yeah. And they announced this game pretty late, too. You know, yeah. given, given how much stuff is in this game, the different gameplay systems, and it looks really polished, obviously, because it's basically done. Do you, do you guys feel like this is going to be the beginning of a franchise? I mean, we have, what, two, almost three Bayonettas? Almost yeah. three. But that's unusual <laughs> for them. Two in right? a teaser it's trailer. Not like, it's not like Platinum did Wonderful 102 and... No. You know, yeah, you know, I think it, it really world. just depends on how well it does. Yeah. Uh, there's a bunch of Platinum one-offs at this point uh, that haven't spawned a series. Mm -hmm. um, I still want to see Metal Gear Rising 2. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, that's a franchise in a, in a tricky spot. Um, yeah. My hope with that is that, you know, Konami puts out some collections. They return that goodwill for having their names near that franchise, and then we start getting sequels. But they stuff. could. I mean, like, that's uh, it's a good note, right? That's a way, a place to go with Metal Gear without Kojima is yeah. we had this separate title that was pretty damn fun. As for sure. Wonderful 101, if they put it on Switch, they would outsell the Wii U version in a week. Yeah, that's true. And then they could start talking sequels. Uh -huh. You know, that's uh -huh. kind of where we are. That was just a, a rough place to book games. So really quick. I heard in Astral Chain, there are a lot of cats and toilets. What's up? <laughs> Please tell me Like more. at the same time? <laughs> no, just separately. But the two, they're just two odd things. Pear is looking at toilets? me like I'm she crazy. Said, she said cats and toilets. Cats and yes, toilets. Pear. I could tell you, but do you really want me to spoil the main plot twist of Astral Chain? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no there, there's, there's some really cool. You had me. There's some really cool side quests involving, involving the cat. Um, and the toilets are actually part of like this this secret kind of side quest where if you like go off the beaten path you'll find like an outhouse and you'll get some toilet paper from it and then you take that toilet paper back to the the police station and there's a ghost that's apparently stuck in a, in a toilet stall that just needs toilet it's paper that a back but to that's the legend map. of zelda is it yeah yes. that's a hand in the toilet we'll yeah give, give and he's toilet like paper? paper paper and then you have to bring him a deed to a location that you purchased oh, wow. even, even skyward deed. sword had it yeah. I didn't even know that was a reference yeah. to something. So, so weird. <laughs> per, can you translate uh, cats and toilets in German? Katzen toiletten. Katzen klo. That's not true. Katzen klo is a cat toilet. Katzen klo. Katzen klo is a cat yeah. toilet? Yeah. I don't understand Katzen your language, klo. man. It does not make sense. <laughs> so easy. Well, Mitchell, thank you so much for talking to us about Astral <laughs> Yeah, no Chain. problem. Anytime. Now I wanted to move over to talk about the um, Indie World live stream, mm -hmm. where we saw, I mean, it was a laundry list of indie games that was announced and we got to see new trailers of a lot of the stuff that was yep. announced at E3 and previously. Thank you so much for putting together that list because it was a lot. And we also got two surprise It's Out Now, which is a yeah. Super Hot and Hotline Miami collection. Mm -hmm. Super Hot, I know is a lot of our fav favorite, we, a lot of us like Super Hot. Mm -hmm. Have any of you been able to play it? I Switch haven't played yet? the Switch version yet. Um, I did read our review for it, which made me very excited. It's twenty four ninety nine, so I was a little hesitant because mm. it's a kind of short game. I also like I own multiple VR devices, and so for me, 
that's not the place I would go to for it. Yeah. But like everything else on Switch, it's not really about the being the best place to play, but uh, more about having the option to play so it how, anywhere. How do you play it? I have not, obviously, Super, Super Hot didn't start as a VR game. Right. It but like, it's game. basically now, everybody knows it as a VR game because it's so unique that when you move your body time forwards, like the, your enemies are frozen in time until you move yourself mm -hmm. and you can like grab bullets out of the air. But when you do it, they travel mm -hmm. and they can hit you. Like, how do you do that on, on the Switch now? Like, I mean, such different different setup. It's, and, it's definitely missing the hook of like, yeah. The, the immersion angle of it, but it's still a pretty badass action game. Same kind you know? of yeah. puzzle idea. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I played Super Hot on PC well before I played it on mm -hmm. VR, obviously, yeah. and that game is still amazing, just just as a first-person shooter where time only moves as you do. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think it's a, an amazing uh, fit on the Switch. And actually, Destin Legary told me that he was so glad that he finally had a game to download on the Switch because he's really into Super Hot and really? he wanted to play it on the plane. He came oh, on to go. me too right before we came on here. He's like, yeah. Super Hot available now? And yeah, like, two meat swords is. in his yeah. hand. And <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't have games to download on the Switch. He used to listen in Nintendo Voice Chat. We talk about games right. every single week. It's yeah, ridiculous. Lots of games. Uh, every, I, every Thursday at I did play, com. That's right. I did play a bunch of Hotline Miami, which I am so happy to have on a portable again. To me, uh, that game and Vita just went hand in hand. Mm -hmm. uh, on a television, it's really frustrating to spend a, a Saturday afternoon dying over and over and restarting over and over and just like doing consuming the entire living room on a handheld while you're like watching a TV show or doing something else yeah. this is like such a perfect place for this game it's a top down hyper violent you know hack and slash shooting game where you basically burst into rooms and just <laughs> tear people apart and it's just like you're fighting gangsters and they have animal masks it's like super stylish uh, I really really love this game um, and it's got this very sort of, like sort of you know one more round, one more round because you'll you'll die a lot. Great soundtrack. And, yeah, awesome soundtrack. Did you guys see the tweet from Devolver Digital about why Hotline Miami would never be on the Switch? No. no. They said that uh, it would never be on the Switch because apparently Miyamoto hated the music. <gasps> and then what? when this was announced, they they posted another tweet that said like Miyamoto changed his mind. <laughs> no. <laughs> I wonder. How much truth there is to that? Yeah. I can't imagine Miyamoto hating anything. It might have been <laughs> one of those hearsay yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who knows? That's funny. That's really cool, yeah. Mm -hmm. So there were a ton of other games talked about during this presentation. Mitchell, what, what game are you most looking forward to? Um, There was a game that had like this this really cool voxel style. I think it was called The Tourist. Yes. Mm -hmm. and yeah, that's playable here, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, okay, we should cool. get you over there. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, that, that looked really, really cool. It, it had like a good mix of like dungeon exploring and like there was a, t a moment where you're like walking along like a, a boardwalk almost and there were like all these crazy sto uh, stores he goes inside and he starts playing a, uh, an arcade game uh, you can see it right here uh, and <laughs> the, the dude is just wearing the, the most awesome Hawaiian shirt he's yeah. got this it is, it is Little Max mustache. yeah it's Little Max <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think that game looks really, really cool. Yeah, yeah I was. Uh, I'm really into the art direction in this game. It feels like a little Minecrafty, but also a little 3D dot game heroes. Yeah. Um, the overworld is kind of like sparse and minimalist, mm -hmm. and it's also like fun and goofy. So I don't really know how those are gonna jive, but I, I'm really intrigued in that. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot going on here. Um, this is this was a surprise, so I'm, I'm interested in this one. I wanted to bring up um, Ori in the Blind Forest. Yes, yeah. sure. that was super unexpected. I mean, yep. I always assumed it would be a Microsoft exclusive, and it even says from Microsoft Studios in the presentation. Mm -hmm. And now we're getting it on the Switch. Yep. I'm excited because that was a game that I, I just never played, and it's yep. always been one of those games. It's like, man, that would I would really like that. And now it's coming on the Switch, so I have no excuse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I have this game on Xbox. I have this game on Game Pass. I love this game. I'm going to play this game again on Switch because Metroidvanias on a handheld just fit. It just works. We honestly, we, I was joking about this with Zach Ryan the other day, but we needed to make a list at IGN of like the top 50 Metroidvanias on Switch. Because there's, there's probably at least 50, 50 of them. Now. Yeah, point. that's there crazy. There are so many. Yeah. Just, and the I'll game... Just finish it up and say Hollow Knight number one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, so this is, I mean, this is up there now with, uh, what, Super Lucky Tail and um, Cuphead in terms yes. of previously Microsoft exclusives oh, yeah. that are now just like loaned out to Nintendo. Their yeah. relationship is getting and better. Banjo-Kazooie has characters, obviously, in yeah. Smash. I, I feel like we're going to get a Forza game on Switch one day. Well, <laughs> Seriously. Xbox, Xbox has reiterated Mario that they Forza. want... Mario <laughs> Forza. They want... Chief in Smash. Yeah. That would Never be awesome. Know. Yeah. But Xbox has reiterated that they want the Game Pass to be on other consoles. I know. So 
are we going to get an Xbox Game Pass on the Switch? I feel like that's going to be one of those things where like Nintendo's like, hey, that's pushing it. Yeah. You can't just launch Game Pass on Switch. That's like 200 games. Well, that's about all the time we <laughs> have to talk about um, the Nintendo Switch games and Astral Chain and everything else. Thank you so much for watching. Keep it right here. We'll be right back. Listen. And we are back, and we were going to talk about games we're playing, but we're actually all just still playing Fire Emblem, and I don't think you want to hear more about it. <laughs> so we're going to go straight into Question Block instead. Sure. The game. Zach's favorite game. Yeah, one of my all-time favorites. Let's game of the year. Yeah. So Oops. first, from um, Corbin Bemp, he asked, what game will be buried in September? He says we, he thinks uh, Damon X Machina will be have slow sells just because of how many games are coming out in September. We have Spyro, Creature in the Well, Damon X Machina, Blasphemous, Nino Kuni, Link's Awakening, Dragon Quest XI, or in the Blind Forest, and then the last day of August, Astral Chain is coming out, so it might as well be a September release, yeah. right? That's a lot yeah, of Yeah, I mean, it, when you put Damon X Machina up against that, that lineup, it's tough to... It, especially given how poorly it showed in that beta, you know, back when was that? Earlier this year? Yeah. Late last year? I can't remember, but... Have, have you gotten a chance to play it? No, it's oh, yeah. here. I it's watched it. It looks here. faster. Yeah. yeah. So it looks more exciting from what I've seen. There, yeah. I think there are like two kiosks that are playing it. Um, I Look, I thought they would keep this for a rainy day, like a month like February or yeah. something where, where there's nothing. I, I could see it selling against like a Link's Awakening where maybe two different gamer types play these right, games. Right, right, right. Like Astral Chain, same month. We're getting too yeah. much crossover, I feel like. Yeah, no, I think February is a great place for this game. I mean, honestly. <laughs> just Unfortunately, now, it's Brian. coming in September, yeah. I know. I Well, kick well it. you could buy it in September yeah. and then put it away till February. Or you could just yeah, wait until that's February not how it works, and okay, that's hope not how it it's works. on sale. Yeah. So, yeah. Out of, yeah. so out of all those games, you think Damon X Machina is the one that's going to suffer the most? Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. I, think, I think Zelda's going to sell the best. It, yeah. it, it may, qu <laughs> Just quite honestly, the best. it may sell be, the best. yeah, it will. It <laughs> may be a low confidence move by Nintendo too, where they're saying maybe the game is not yeah. doesn't have that much audience potential, so let's just release it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I guess. Or maybe it's not that great. Is that something know. that like publishers and developers do? They stack the cards against themselves. If it's like, well, we don't necessarily want need people talking about this game in a negative way, so we'll just bury it with all these other games? Yeah, I mean, you I've could never definitely, thought about that. but yeah. um, I, don't, I don't think so. I mean, the game doesn't look, it's not, it doesn't look like a bomb. It doesn't look bad from everything we've seen, right? Do you think so? I don't think or it looked, I, I, that beta completely turned me off. The like, beta wasn't great. Yeah, I agree. it was really yeah. not but good. I don't think they would like deliberately bury it yeah. because mm -hmm. they have done some marketing around it, but not a lot. Significantly less. Yeah. Well, the yeah. beta was like specifically to identify problems, which hopefully they did. And true. We haven't That's true. That's a good since, point. So it could be great, but there, it's just not that month. Like there's mm -hmm. just way too much. Yeah. Even if I just played Zelda and Ori and like one other game, I'm good for September. Sure. Yeah. They should have put it on Christmas Day or something. Yeah, everyone loves to wake up on Christmas Day and play the <laughs> giant slow mech game. I guess this game, I mean, this month Gather also around the, kind the of campfire. accidentally got stacked as well because Ori and the Blind Forest was just announced. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And was did Blasphemous just get that release date? or? Yes, I believe that was a Gamescom deal was yeah. the Blasphemous release date. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we interviewed them on our live show this week, and we have that we have that video up, and everyone should go watch it because it's awesome. They showed us a brand-new boss fight. and That game looks insane. Yeah, it looks yeah. really, really good. That's but blasphemous. We're talking. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's yeah. kind of silly to be complaining about too many games coming out. Oh for yeah. Switch. So it's uh, it's nice that we're getting mm -hmm. some diversity too, right? That's a that's a type of game that you haven't seen much on the Switch, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Could go back to the uh -huh. Wii U days where we didn't have any games. To that's right. We play. got like yeah. one one we game every buy Amiibo. 14 that was the only years. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, and did I buy Amiibo? <laughs> you haven't stopped. I got out I of the game. You're still in there. Yeah. So I feel like I feel like you would rehab. There's a lot of games, but that's okay. And if you want to play Damon X Machina, you should do that and help their yep. sales. Damon sure. will be playing it. <laughs> and I don't from, even uh, think he will be playing it. Mm -hmm. If you named that game Brian X Machina, I still wouldn't play it. <laughs> <You wouldn't> play <laughs> Brian X Machina? I would totally <laughs> play game. But your name. Game I know. I know. It's I mean, it's going to be Damon's game of the year, right? <laughs> it will be. It will have to be. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, he loves what a big else robot. So from uh, Andrew Corey, he says, what lost indie game do you want to hear about? For example, like, Untitled, the, the Goose Game. Oh, yeah. Uh, when, yeah, when that was a little weird that it was not in that direct. I was just talking about direct. that with Max Scoville yeah, yesterday. Yeah, yeah, what happened to that game? It's probably been held for more geese. Yeah? Yeah. Is there any, are there any other indie games or games in general that you heard about initially and then just like never came back? Uh, the thing that I really want to see is like two years ago, Yacht Club Games, creators of Shovel Knight, put out this survey that they were like, what should we do next? Yeah, like I a remember A top-down game, like a, a Metroidvania, yeah. and I was just like, click, 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 like all of them. Yeah, one yeah. of those options happened. was like a 16-bit RPG, yep. and I was well into that idea too. Yeah. 
and then none of them ever came true. Well, it's because they're so beholden to that Kickstarter still. I know. Like, they're still trying to fulfill all those Kickstarter requirements. Yeah. I, I would love to see something new from Yacht Club. Um, I, I would say Indivisible is a game that I would would like to, or I would have liked to hear more about, but they've just recently started doling out more information about that game, which is looking really, really cool. Mm -hmm. That's the, the team behind um, Skull Fighters? And it's like an RPG where you play as like a bunch of different characters, and they all have these like crazy hand-drawn animations. It's a beautiful game to see in motion. I've been trying to champion that one for a bit. I think not, not an indie game, but I remember like at E3 like years ago, we sh we saw this like dungeon game from Capcom. I think it was called Deep oh, Down. Yeah, oh, Deep yeah. Down. And yeah, that's right. Never spoken about ever again. Yeah, that was like mm -hmm. a PS4 yeah. launch title or something, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. It was gone. Yeah. Just yeah. never to be yeah, heard what of ever again. To that? Yeah, but well, I let's hope go to the Capcom booth and ask. Let's go ask. Yeah, yeah. let's do it. All right, I mean, okay. that's just. All right. All right, they are right over there. Um, <laughs> but no, I really was looking forward to Goose Game, and I think a lot of other people were, and it just like, it's gone. I, I don't now. know, like I. It's weird. It hasn't disappeared that long for me. I saw it at the uh, indie open house at yeah. the game development it conference. At, yeah, it was, it was at playable. GDC. Right, yeah. right, right. And so like that was just in March. Yeah. And it's not uncommon for games to go dark for a while. Yeah. You know, like if they don't have anything to talk about, it doesn't serve them any good to like continue showing the same builds or the same marketing no, materials. Very Especially so. because some of them have development teams of one. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. so it'll take them a while to make yeah. Some of them have yeah. goose of one. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. One. One yes. goose. He says. So from Travis Hendricks, he asks, are we done with the Wii U ports? I can't help but feel that uh, New Super Mario Bros. Deluxe U, U Deluxe, that's backwards. <laughs> New Super Mario one? Brothers Deluxe U, right? U no, U Deluxe. No, U Deluxe. Is it U yeah. Deluxe? Mm -hmm. Yes, U Deluxe. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think anyone actually You know what, Brian? No. U Deluxe. Well, they forgot to put the name on the box, <laughs> so it's impossible to tell, really. Are we done with Wii U ports? Hell no. 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 We Come need on. Wind Waker HD. We need Super Mario 3D World. We need... I would Wind like to Waker see... is a GameCube port, though. Uh, yeah, Not but the, HD. But, but the, it, the HD version is exclusive to Wii U. The HD version is, like, the definitive version of that game. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't know about that because you can't invert your controls. So. Well, that's true. That's um, true. I'd like to see like game. I'd like to see like a wonderful 101 come to uh, that's right. Switch. That's kind it of didn't really get a fair shake. Yeah, and that's yeah, a great right. game yeah. on Wii U. And okay. then Pikmin, obviously. Yeah, Pikmin yeah. Three would be good. Yeah. Okay. You're right. I didn't even. There are so many good games on the Wii U that I just haven't thought about yep. for such a long yeah. time. That Nintendo Land. Ooh. It's kind of. That's I like Nintendo Land. It's got some more Nintendo Land. Three of the modes are great. Uh, but, uh, but Wind Waker honestly has to come across. They did all this work for the Wii U port. Just re-release it. I mean, Twilight Princess, the same deal. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, they even have, you could use the Twilight Princess Wolf Amiibo in Breath of the in Wild. Breath of the Wild. I guess Breath of the Wild is also a Wii U game. But yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I The ultimate they, Wii U port. They made that connection. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think there'll they'll be, they'll be more. It's just it's just natural. The Wii U didn't sell, so some of the games that were re-released or came out for it originally will find new life on Switch. A criminally yeah. underrated system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But first we're getting Sunshine on April 4th, 2040. Yeah, I'm actually more okay. interested in, in importing some yeah. Wii games to, to the Switch. Like, I'd like to see uh, Mario Galaxy 1 and 2. Yep. That would be, that'd be a dream come true for yeah. me on Switch. Maybe they'll bring uh, Time Splitters over from GameCube since we're not getting that new version. I right? bet you Time Splitters has aged poorly. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. That's a great game, but I don't know. Yeah. Not but right that now. Floaty little. Yeah. The floaty little. Didn't they just announce they're making a new one? Yeah, but not for Switch. Last uh, minute. Switch. Really quick, a Gamescom edition question. Lightning round. From Oliver Cooper, what's your favorite German beer? I mean, what? Kolsch. Well, that's nice of you. Yeah. You drink about uh, 30 liters of Kolsch when you come to Gamescom. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you're, I think we're legally required by the city of Cologne to say Kolsch. So, to explain, Kolsch is the endemic beer Kirsch. of the city. Kolsch. Kolsch. With Kirsch. an U. <laughs> we have a letter with dots on it. Let's make fun of the farmer. Yeah, eyes on it. Uh, Kirsch is the it's endemic beer of Cologne, and you can only brew it if your brewery has a direct line of sight of the Cathedral of Cologne named the, the, the Dome. The Dome. The dome. I didn't know that. That's cool. So if you either. if you want to brew it anywhere else, it's coach style. Mm -hmm. oh. It's like champagne. Yeah. Yeah. I it was is. I was uh, in Belgium right before this trip, and this is not a German beer, but I had a beer called a Chuf. Chuf. <laughs> That's you made that. Like up. a Chuf. Yeah. Yes, okay. I had a whole bunch of Chuf. Belgium has really good beers. <laughs> but like I got to pick coach too, and the secret grip with coach is they serve it in 0 0.2 uh, liter glasses. They're called Stangen. They're like straight glasses, and uh, it never gets warm because the glass is so small. You just go, <laughs> it's gone. Yeah, and then like, the waiter automatically like the brings the next here. one. Yeah, yeah. They, they bring them in these big, like circular wheels. 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 Yeah, and 
you just grab them, slam them, put them back. And it's really funny because like we do these oh, team the dinners, time. and at the end of it, they're like, "Okay, that was uh, four meals and seventy-eight beers." <laughs> but it's not that much money. That's no, also it's great. True. It's cheap. Which is yeah. the best part. So there's some of your German beer history Thank information you. here on NBC, the beer podcast, also sometimes about Nintendo. <laughs> I'll take it. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, you can watch Nintendo Voice Chat every Thursday at 3 p.m. on IGN.com, YouTube.com, or your favorite podcasting platform. And thank you for watching. And remember, this is the only place you can. Get the thing. thing. Tschüss. Auf Wiedersehen. Tschüss. Hallo. Mach's gut. Hallo. Goodbye. <laughs>